Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International. We meet behind the Trade Fair or Life Cathedral. I'm bringing to you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Today I want to look at some, uh, uh, a fact of life, which whether we like it or not will happen to us. And I want to look at the topic of betrayal. Betrayal. When somebody betrays your trust or somebody sells you to somebody else, or when somebody places you in harm's way by an act of treachery, when somebody betrays a trust, that, a story that you've told the person, and the person then goes to repeat it in order to put you in harm's way and to lift a public opprobrium against you. Those are the things I want to talk about. Betrayal. Are you aware that betrayal is a fact of life? It's a fact of life. If it has not happened to you, by all means, one way or the other, it will. And there will be people who will, be, who will betray you. Now, the Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So the person, our yardstick for life is Jesus. And if Jesus um, was betrayed, then of course, I mean, we would also um, be betrayed. Because that's what it is. Betrayal is when somebody, there's something that you might have committed to that person. Or a trust reposed in that person is shattered by an act of that person, a sellout to other people that lowers who you are in the sight of those people and makes you an object of public ridicule or harm you, harm your, your, your status, harm you personally or something like that. When I was reading the story in, in Luke chapter 22, you remember the story, um, and then uh, John 13, I found some very interesting things over there. Now, Jesus sits at table with his disciples, and then the, he, he says, look, someone is going to betray me. Someone is going to betray me. And the way Jesus said it, it wasn't nice. It made everybody there depressed. Betrayal is a very depressing thing. And betrayal is something that really saddens you. And betrayal will make you wear a garment of sorrow. Because sometimes you look at the person and you look at the relationship that you have with that person and that person goes out to do what they did, why they did it, when they did it, and how they did it. So betrayal is not a very interesting thing. Betrayal introduces sorrow. Betrayal introduces pain. So Jesus sitting at the table and then he says, someone is going to betray me. So everybody is sad. And everybody's wondering who is going to do this dastardly act? Who is going to do this, this, this treacherous act? And all the disciples are worried. And then Jesus makes a statement, and the statement Jesus made, and so they are wondering. So they asked him through John, Lord, who's going to betray you? And then Jesus said, The one who's going to take the mess of pottage with me, the person who is going to dip and take the meat um, with me at the same time. Wow. Now, let me go through why people betray you and be very surprised. Sometimes because of offense. Judas was offended when they poured the alabaster box of oil upon Jesus. And he was then saying, this thing could have been sold for, you know, uh, 30 pieces of silver. And he was a thief. So he was thinking about how he was going to get the... And, the, and also to Judas... Also, you remember, he was from uh, Iscaria, where they were nationalists, believing that the Messiah that was coming was going to be a physical Messiah who was going to rescue them from the holes of the Roman system. So the fact that Jesus said, I'm not bringing, uh, bringing a nationalist kingdom, but I'm bringing a kingdom that's from above, that might also have created offense. And then the offense of the, um, the alabaster. So number one, people betray you out of offense. Number two, People betray you for profit. People betray you for profit, if you remember. And then people be, will betray you out of competition. Now, here's the point. 
if you dip your hands in him. In those days, when a table is served, the big man first will have a taster. There's a taster who comes to taste it to make sure there's no poison in it. But afterwards, you know, the big man takes first. Of course, you remember when you were kids, your, your mom cooks and they leave the choice part of the uh, chicken for you, for those of uh, you know where we come from, daddy gets the choice part, and then you might probably get the chicken legs, yeah, or probably if God blesses you, chicken neck, <laughs> you understand? But guess what it is? I mean, the choice part is left for the big people. It's just what we do. When we go to a party where there's a buffet, the high table serves themselves first. So the man of distinction, the man of authority, the man of this thing, serves himself first. So when Judas dipped his son in the pot with Jesus, he said, we are equal. What is yours is also mine. It's a spirit of competition. And listen, when somebody is competing with you in their spirit, and they realize that you're rising, you're rising, you're rising, what they need to do is to do something that will bring you down, that will level the playing field, so that you and the person become one. The person doesn't respect what you have. The person doesn't respect who you are. The person is competing with you and he said, that's number one. Offense, unresolved offense will let somebody betray you. So you know that betrayal? It was an unresolved offense. Then the third one, for profit. People will betray you for profit. He sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Betrayal is a fact of life. And whether you like it or not, it will happen. These are the reasons why the betrayal. But you know one thing? Betrayal is never your end. Because God will find a way to, to remove your feet from the snare of the fowler and lift you up from the merry clay and then establish you upon a solid rock to, say, to stay. The betrayers, they'll go away. So guess what? What happened to Judas? He faded. But guess what? What also happened to um, Jesus? He seated at the right hand of God. God will find a way to lift you up above betrayal. There is the pain of betrayal. The deadly distance that comes with betrayal. God is going to find a way to lift you high above it. God is going to find a way to promote you. God, what betrayers don't know. When Judas was betraying Jesus, he thought he was finishing with him. No, he was rather pushing him towards the throne. He was rather pushing him towards the fulfillment of his destiny call. So guess what? Don't be afraid. Let them betray you. It will happen out of offense, out of competition, and out of profit. But who cares? Out of jealousy, whatever it is, God will find a way to lift your head up. God will find a way to crown you like he crowned Joseph. So you know what? Your trial is a fact. But you shouldn't be afraid of it because he's bigger than the betrayal. God bless you. See you the next time.